Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Um, in the past, when I was doing Ranked, I recorded it after. I recorded it in a replay. Um, that worked okay, but some of you prefer actual live gameplay. Then I tried a couple of bits of live gameplay, and that way I got distracted. The distraction was trying to do cohesive commentary as well as trying to create a strategy and respond to the moves of the opponent at the same time. Leading to both, I think, poorer quality of commentary and at the same time leading to poorer quality gameplay. This is option three. This is me doing the narration after I recorded the video, or rather after I recorded the gameplay. So the gameplay that you see is um, live footage. It's not the replay, as you can see. But I am uh, basically leaning back in my desk chair, recording the commentary for you, which is something that I have never done in 3,000 videos. So it's going to be a new experience. I think it's be, it'll be, especially for ranked games, it'll be way more relaxed. And it'll allow me to focus on various situations on the battlefield with more ease, as well as spot more stuff that I should have done different. Now, today I'm fighting a private, and I'm using my USSR deck again. I have made some small adjustments as opposed to the previous version of this deck. Uh, the previous version of the deck had uh, BTR 90s with, uh, sorry, the other way around. It had Spetsnaz Gru in BTR 90s and Spetsnaz Gru in Helos, which for the original creator of the deck worked great. For me, not so much. So slowly but steadily, I'm starting to adjust the deck to my own flavor. And I find that the BRDM, in my case, is just more, well, more functional. It suits my playstyle a little better. The plan for this map, Nuclear Winter is Coming, is to deploy a defensive force in Ivan. Uh, defensive force is going to be, as you can see, an OSA, as well as a T-80. Unfortunately, this time around, of course, as it is post, I cannot quite zoom in. Um... It is going to be a BRDM-3 with a reconnaissance, or sorry, as reconnaissance with a Melyutka or a Factoria HGM on the right flank, so in the more open area. It'll be scouted by Erosvetka and Hilo. Um, something you see me do over here, by the way, replace the basic BRDM, uh, the BRDM-2U command unit with a T-80UK to make sure I have uh, a better defended position. It's something that... It was basically a bit of a last move decision. It was something that somebody commented in a previous video and they said, hey, this might help um, because it is far more durable. And even if you get Hilo rushed, which in my case happens occasionally, um, even if you get Hilo rushed, killing a T-80 UK, way more difficult than killing something such as a BRDM, um, a Jeep, or even command infantry. Anyway, aside from the plan to defend Ivan, I want to have a scattering of forces in Dimitri and center, and potentially even the, as far as the sector of Anna on the left side of the river, if I can get there, to make sure that I have some units that will arrive fast, and the rest of the units will be called in from the left of the river. Currently just deploying my units. Here comes the reconnaissance. I sent one too many recons that way. And I'm trying to get the MI-8 with the recon infantry in position. Now, the Resvetka is not great for this. Um, arguably, BTR-90 would have been more useful there for a future time. This is more for me, maybe, than for you. But a BTR-90 with reconnaissance infantry is both um, a very dangerous recon team, Spatsnaz Group, and fire support for the tanks against enemy infantry. Alright, dropping off command infantry over there and sending the K-29TB over to the left. Uh, bringing some defenses in the form of two Skrejets with ATGMs. More so for the use of the Skrejet than the actual ATGM. Because I'm concerned about Helos and the Skrejets stun them. First contact, Delta, or Dimitri. Um, MI-8, MTVs both getting killed off by the VDV. And considering that there was a fairly large group, I decided to push on. In the meanwhile, more contact on the right. And... I start to call in more units for Center and Dimitri. This time around, Scratchets, because they are not that... Well, they are slower. But at the same time, I thought, you know what? We'll just see how far I can get with these airborne boys. And I actually get to the Sector almost at the same time he does. He caps it. And that's when I run into trouble in the form of ATG... No, not ATGMs. Autocannons. 
And those auto cannons are going to prove to be quite problematic. Now, uh, Rezvetka in the middle of nowhere over there. I didn't really have a good place to, sp to put it, aside from just, I don't know, in the woods, where I should have had it. Anyway, this action um, delays the enemy, at least a little bit. But I have a problem. That column, Dimitri. I lost sight of it, and I know that uh, they are potentially a bunch of VABs. They're definitely quick movers. They're going to keep moving quickly. And we're going to see them soon. Just not really where I would want them to go. CDV are doing some ambushing over here. Making sure that the enemy does not get the jump on... Or that I... Well, that the enemy does not get the reinforcements that they need. So, very quickly the vehicles get taken out by the VDV. And then the Chasseur get taken out by the Hilo. And I will try to find the command vehicle there. Two T-80s working over some vehicles. This is where the two T-80s are going to come in useful. Uh, I considered putting in one T-80, but I thought it would just not have enough firepower. There's the column of fast movers. I thought this was a really good move by my enemy. He pushed right forward when he did not see any resistance. He probably figured out at this point that since I had my helos over there in Boris, and some helos in Dimitri, and a bunch of units on the right, that I'm weak on the left. And he's absolutely right. Uh, the CV buy over there for that two-pointer is terrible. I should not have done that. That was way too early, and I had no control over the map at this point. So just trying to get ACV in there ASAP is nuts. Moving forward with the BRDM is also pretty nuts. I should have moved a bunch of Modestrelki first. Now here's the column. And of course, Skrejets are not going to cut it, but a T-80 in the BMPT that I called in might be able to do it. I right, push the BRDM back in. And the BRDM encounters the Legionnaires, which, of course, with their <laughs> their missile, very, very quickly kill the BRDM. And I make the mistake of having the Skrejets out in the open, as well as pushing the K-29 forward into the Legionnaires. Looking back at it, this is a bit of a bad move. Because I'm pushing with something that's essentially fire support. But I'm trying to use it as a pusher. Which does not work. Over here it's far more useful. Because now it is providing fire support to both the T-80 as well as the VD. Couple more vehicles getting wiped out there. The VD are holding position. And it's mostly vehicles. Vehicles, some infantry and overall fairly weak. In the meanwhile, dropping off some more Modestrelki from the VDV, or from the MT LDV. I don't quite understand why he kept moving here, especially with something as weak as an AMX-13. Basically had no business being there. It couldn't have pushed. Now, this is another mistake, um, and I recognized this as I was playing. I thought that at this point I might have wiped out most of his forces. Especially the ones that kept pushing towards Dimitri. Or kept pushing from Dimitri. So I move up with my T-80 and my BMPT. I move up with my Modestrelki, but the Modestrelki basically have no fire support. And I also call in an OSA to make sure that if he responds with further fire support in the form of aircraft, they get taken out. Call in the T-80s, call in a Ural, or sorry, pull back the T-80s and I call in a Ural over there. Get some infantry over there. And now we have problems, but I still don't know where. I think it's the T-80, but it's actually something else. It's the T-80 UK. The UK is defending itself. Or at least that's what I thought at the time. So I call in some units, uh, and I call in a BRDM, and of course, I try and spawn the unit in there, so I stop the tank. Get the MTLBV to move to the building over there and drop it off. This is when that T-80 UK command decision came in really, really useful. But we're not done yet. There's still more fighting at the base. I just don't see it. Not the first time that I overlooked the base. And it will not be the last. So you can be assured of that. Now at this point, um, I still don't notice that the thing has been destroyed. Whatever it was that was fighting my command tank. Again, if that had not been a command tank, if that had been a BRDM-2U, I would have lost my main spawn, and with that, potentially the game. At least it would have taken a lot of my will to fight out. Now, at this point, I'm messing around quite a bit. I'm considering calling in or pushing forward with the OSA or 
calling another one or not calling it in. So I, I cease to call it in. I cancel the order. Get the Mojstrelki to take out the Gazelle. I'm trying to move forward here with the Mojstrelki, but that's a bad move. It's a bad move because I do not have fire support, and they do. There's a Tiger waiting there, and I knew that, but for some reason I just pushed forward. So now I have absolutely nothing on the front line, with the exception of a Tunguska and an Oso. Great play. Let the Strelke go after the Gazelle. He takes a two-pointer, so he starts leading. Small skirmish over there, but overall nothing too serious. But this is bad. And this is again me pushing in with units without fire support. Or rather, with pushing with the fire support. Tanks and BMPTs, uh, very, very useful if they have a meat shield in the form of Modestrelki or, well, whatever you want to use. In my case, it's going to be Modestrelki, but I did not wait for those. I just got hungry, greedy, I pushed in, and I got rewarded. Now, this is when the battle for Ivan starts. I try to get a CV in, I try to get a CV in again, but <laughs> I can't afford it yet. Waiting, and there's the CV, finally. Yes, sir. So now I move forward with Tunguska and with, I think, one or yes, two more Modestrelki. Yeah, two more. There's more Vabs, 2013s to be exact. The BMPT has survived. I'm not sure if it's going to get countered. At least I wasn't at the time. But you really generally do not want to be in PT rampaging around in your lines. Especially not something as soft as infantry over there. Although legionnaires against a BMPT from a town, not a great fight. But I do manage to intercept a pirate. Um, I'm not sure if a command infantry is going to come to the pirate. It could, I suppose. Very, very slightly out of range. So time to move the Tunguska forward, as this time around I'm fairly confident that I have some defenses against the Legionnaires in the town. The Tunguska spends quite a while missing its shots, but the Tiger Hap does, I think, take a hit and starts bobbing up and down. Fire again, this time it's a hit. And a miss again. And there's the kill. That's one of his Tigers down. I say one of his, because you generally don't get that many in the deck. Now at this point, all I have in Dimitri is VDB, and all I have here is Modestrelki. I still have a Beardy M waiting on the corner, but you can see just how long this decision haunts me. Because I bought that Beardy M to you, it's not doing anything useful, but it has taken up 120 points, which I should, in retrospect, absolutely have spent on infantry. Because it is going to take me a while to get center back. Way too long, in fact. That's a kill on the vehicle. Um, alternatively, or, well, let's say counteractively, my opponent should have pushed on to the position where I'm just pulling in the MTLBV with more infantry. He's not, but he could have easily pushed there and wiped out everything. And if he was in those buildings over there, so let's say in front of the Osa, it would have been a far different story. Because he would have been very, very much threatening Gregory, and I would not have anything to deal against it. Fortunately, he didn't know that, or he didn't capitalize on my mistakes. At least not enough. And I suspect that if this were a more advanced player, he probably would. Bit of a mistake here, leaving some units out. Uh, get the BTR offloaded, get the uh, spat screw forward. This is also a mistake. I moved the Modestrelki for no apparent reason. Because they are effectively fine where they are. But my concern is that my op uh, opponent is going to capture center. And when he does, he's going to be at another plus two. And I really do not want that. Now, this is another stupid move. I try and get Modestrelki to fight infantry entrenched in the building. Yeah, you can guess how well that's going to go. Mm. 
I'm gonna just try, okay, I just try again, foolhardily. This time around I'm calling the BTR forward, the BTR-90, to try and support. Um, I'm considering getting some of my VDV to come in a BMD-3, or at least some BMD variant, because it can be very useful in providing fire support. Right now I don't really have any fire support, I just have a ton of uh, cheap scratches. And it might be something that works in the meta, or at least that works for some people in the meta, but that was stupid. Um, I found that I need to work with units that I uh, that I enjoy working with, that I have faith in, rather than just copying a deck that somebody else has and hoping that I do well with it. I mean, it's a perfectly fine, in my opinion, to start with an example deck, but if you find that units for example, in a transport, don't work as well as you would like them. Change it. It is a game. Have fun with it. Now, the VAP took its fair chunk out of the Motor Trelki, but I do have a building there. I'm thinking if I can push forward with the T-80s over there, but that's really not a good idea, so time to call in some more Motor Trelki first. I thought we're going to probe on the other end as well. Because if I'm pushing into a line here that he keeps reinforcing, it's not going to be very clever. So the better, well, the better way to do it is probably to try and probe the other way as well. The spats grew with our last breath, basically take out the second of looks. Surprisingly, I really expected them to die because they were heavily, heavily stunned. There is a retreating pirate, or well, at least a retreating helo. Yeah, it's a pirate. Calling in some potnos. But this is a really bad move. It's a half-assed push that I'm uh, preparing here. I'm going to be hitting the buildings. But I basically have nothing forward. In the sense that I have a couple of wounded infantry groups. Which are not even designed to push. They're modest velky. Um, and I have no fire support. Moving the Tunguska to prepare for a potential counterattack from the skies, and I would rather have it on the left with the BMPT and the BRDM and the tank than in those woods. Because I do not trust, there we go, the enemy not to have something like Rima or Legionnaires or whatever there, capable of one-shotting a very expensive NDR piece. Now, time to get the Mojitoki back and try and get the tank in a poor position to assist, but it's difficult here. I really need to practice microwing this sector because I just couldn't do it. Now, I got hungry over there. I wanted to get the Rima killed that I saw earlier. Couldn't quite do it. Um, so I decided to pull the tank and the BRDM back because I thought it would be more useful to have them alive and threatening over there rather than have them in a position where they would likely get killed. Just called in a CV, by the way, for Dimitri, so that I can uh, land it there. Here come the Magistrelki. I'm actually quite surprised that there is a go over there and the field is still alive. Anyway, back to here, because I really wanted these buildings. Not necessarily wise, but I wanted the buildings. I wanted to make sure that I had more control over the sector, even though I already parked my command vehicle in there. The is doing some work, providing fire support. Oh, so in a pretty terrible spot in retrospect. Probably would, maybe, would not be able to fire. Comes a missile, definitely meant for the T-80. Wondering what recon to call in there. <laughs> Eventually not calling in anything. There's the helo transferring the command infantry, moving forward, dropping off, moving back. BRDM forward to the right flank. Or at least close to the water. Credit where credit is due. This guy definitely had his recon in order. There were gazelle cannons everywhere. So sneaking in somewhere was going to be pretty much impossible, if not very, very difficult. BODM over here is doing something that I think it would not be able to do with, uh, for example, if I had the BTR-90 with, or, well, if I had the Spatsnaz group, um, which is being able to maneuver so fast across the field. Alternatively, it would not have gotten killed, simply because I would not be in a position where I would get detected, or at least it would probably be a little later. 
Put him in the BMPT to provide further fire support here. I know there is some tank up ahead. I just don't know how to kill it yet. But I do now want the wood, so bringing in another Skrejje VV. Smoking up the ATGM. So I can get my tank forward again. I try to move forward with the VV. Very quickly think the better of it once the... Uh, whence? Once the VAP 2013 gets detected, so I push forward with the tank and the Legionnaires say, Thank you very kindly, that was nice. Here's your tank back in pieces. Silly move. Not great. This is mostly a problem that I have, that I need to work on. Whenever I do a push, it's, um, especially currently, it's half fast. And I realized that during the game, so at some point you will see me do better. I think that bigger them got destroyed is the one close to the water. Yeah. No, it's still there. Interestingly, um, he could have very easily flown a couple of healers across the water. And I probably would have been none the wiser. Now, time to see what I can find on the right flank. BRDM, already taking a bit of damage from a previous uh, skirmish, is going to get another Razvetka over there for support. I drop off the infantry and I prepare for to move forward with them under the cover of the T-80s. So I'm probing the other side, just checking to see how much, well, how much reaction I'm going to get. T-80 finds a VTT. In retrospect, again, easy. Uh, but what I could have done, or should have done, especially on the left side, is just bypass the town initially. Take the woods and make sure that no further reinforcements could make it to the town. That way it would have been easier to get the town under control. Now I decide that the town is too heavily entrenched. And... Uh, well, I probably could have taken it if I really wanted to. But I just didn't. See how weak that river is? Nothing. Chasseur get detected. Very, very quickly taken out, at least mostly taken out by the Skrejet. But they <laughs> get their act together and they kill the Skrejet. At least the last guy. Time to call the big guns. Here comes the Uragan. This is when I thought I need to start focusing on a more organized offensive. Not this half assed thing that I've been doing. With the capture of Dimitri, by the way, that center area, or center-ish area, I am able to start gaining some points, which was very necessary. But of course, since he has way more terrain to hide a command vehicle in, my chance of actually getting that sector and keeping it under control were very, very different. Getting it was easy, I could just push his CV in. Keeping it, not so much. Here comes the Ur again, hot keying it, preparing infantry for a push. Skrejet, VDV. I want these woods, the triangular woods that you see over there. I think it was at this point that I was very close actually to stopping the recording. Because I thought, you know what, this is going to be another loss. I don't need to be recording that, that's basically pointless. Because I still have the plus one, but it is so easy for him to counter that, for it to, for it to stop the tick, that I don't really know how to come back from this. I just did not really have a plan. Except that I wanted this sector. I'm going to call in some more guys. Unfortunately, I think I can only afford one, so I cancel it, and I really want two. There we go. That's Dimitri neutralized. So that's the end of the tick for me. Undaunted, we push on. There's a Skrejet coming in with a Victoria HGM. My Skrejet with the VDV are coming. The PTRTs with the Sapri are coming. I got the BMPT and the T-80. Um, I do not yet fire the Uragan there, but I'm just... Well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> 
but it was too early at this point. Simply because I did not have anything ready to start pushing one, well, when the enemy was stunned. So I had to drop off the VDV here instead of using the Skrasha to transport them across because I still don't know how good their AGGMs are. Moving forward with Factoria a little more. That's more VDV. And I got a KA. A 52 over here. It's... Oh, and a 24 VP, by the way. In retrospect, not a great buy, the 52, because it did not do much for me at that point in the battle. And it it's not even a deterrent, because he can't see it. What I can fortunately see is Chasseur, as well as some vehicles. And a VAB, Mephisto. He was definitely zoning that out with ATGMs. Able to take off the Chasseurs very quickly with the DP. But I know that there are some AA units moving around. And I don't mind that much losing the VP, but I would really hate it if I lost the 52. There's the Mistral. There's also the 2A4 that gets spotted by the 52. So I fire one. I get hit by the Mistral. And I try to get my helos out of the area ASAP. Fortunately, it misses. Turn to fire with the Potnos, and then relocate. VDV have made it to the forest. Surprisingly, without getting countered. These VDV are getting detected, because I think the commander's para is still in the woods next to me. So I turn to push forward with the VDV and their fire support in the BMPT. Now, as Lord Pai explained, um, some decks are very good early game. For example, a motorized deck. It's very fast, it pushes, and it keeps the enemy off balance. I'm not quoting him here, but that's what stuck with me. The USSR deck that I'm using is more... And it, again, this is going to depend very much on how people play it. Uh, my USSR general deck is probably more of a slow burner. In the sense that I have more units which are of the slightly higher price class. And that means that you need a bit more time to start building up steam. And I think that this video might just highlight it, although I made a ton of mistakes during it. So I'm still trying to figure out how to exactly make this thing work in, work in ranked. There goes the T-80, for example. Because I think I push it forward too much, and the Legionnaires would agree. This time around I find some more Rima. Immediately have the Potnos open up against it. I want more support before the VDV get wiped out. PTRTs and Sapri moving forward. And this is kind of the position that I wanted to get to ensure that he was not going to be able to reinforce the town easily as well as make sure that there is not going to be a CV in those woods. Sapri forward, VDV back, BTRT slightly forward even though we're facing a VAP but we're also facing Rima. And these things can take at least one hit while using the grenade launcher to great effect to wipe out the enemy. There you go. That's your Rima done. The thing that I did not have was a follow-up. I did not have a tank. And I kind of regret that. Now you saw the, the bigger circle on that block. That was the Uragan that was spooling up. So time to fire an MLRS strike. And the mortars are also kicking off, and they're going to be dropping some smoke for me. At this point, it's blatantly obvious what I'm trying to do. You can see that uh, the Legionnaires, with their probably the last time that they see BTR, uh, before the smoke kicks in, they're able to kill off one of them. This is when the artillery hits. I kind of patiently wait for the Sapri to push in. That's the last strike from the Uragan, the last missile. So now it's time to move up. T-80 moving up. VDV could use some support. In this current situation, it was more useful to bring in VDV. Rather than reinforcements. I'm sorry, rather than resupplies, because they would have been available sooner. Um, the Mephisto, I think, is still there. And... No, sorry, it's a 2A4 that just shot at my T-80. 
The VDV were also pushing forward, but they are having a far worse time. And I do take out one of the building blocks. Moving on to the next, where there's Rima and Legionnaires. And the last thing I need is more fresh Legionnaires to come in. A couple of looks coming in, and again, I have no tanks in the front line on the edge of that forest. That is very unfortunate, and I'm going to be paying for that in blood. So as a sort of last-ditch effort, I'm trying to call in VDV very, very quickly with MI8s. Thankfully, because they drop off, they are unavailable to be hit by the VLRA, which gets taken out by the BMPT. So this time I think, you know what, they might not have that much AA. The VDV can move forward under the cover of the MI8 MTVs. And it's kind of true, because they, they do take out the looks that were threatening my position. T-80s once again under attack by Legionnaires. I lost way too many tanks to Legionnaires. Sapery, this time around getting very much hammered. Because the Legionnaires over there I think are not stunned. And there's the Kotal, but I'm not sure I can hit that with my mortars. So instead, time to get into the building. And try and provide as much support to the Sapery as possible. The Sapery are also receiving support from 10 RCs. Got time for the crippled T-80 to go back forward, as well as my T-72-1989. Mortaring, whatever that is. Resupply coming forward, although there's not much of my VDV left in those forests. Prepping the Urigan to fire on the next town to ensure that, let's say, if there are reinforcements, that they're going to get hammered first. There's a VTT there. Kill it with VDV, easy. At this point, we only have 11 minutes left. 11 minutes. I am behind on points. I am gaining this sector. I'm getting control over it. But it's not happening fast enough. And on top of that, I'm floating well over 300 points. So time to start calling in the expensive toys, the MI-28. I might swap that, though, the MI-28, for the KA-50. Because I do like the double tap that the 50 does. There's the Urigan hitting the town. I move forward with the VDB. But do you see the problem? Let's get back to that in a minute. There's some BMPT action against the commandos. Commandos get killed off. The BMPT survives, but only just. So I try to go after the MI-20, sorry, the, the 2A4, the Leopard, with the MI-28. I move forward without fire support, with the VDV, again. I really need to hammer this home for myself. Fire support, infantry in front, then the fire support and the tanks on the anti-air. Time to hammer the Legionnaire some more. I thought, you know what, I broke through his line. Maybe I can capture that town too. And there is a weakness here. There is a weakness. Because the 52 is able to fly over the woods. I think that once I took out his gazelle, he got fairly blind over there. And I might, might be able to exploit that. He's bringing in Panzer Grenadiers in the Martyr 2. I know that's expensive, so if I can take that down, yes please. But unfortunately, the MI-28 does not take the first hit. But it does eventually get at least one of them killed, I think. And in the meanwhile, I keep scouting with the 52 to try and find his command unit, whatever it might be. So that I'm able to take it out and stop the flow of reinforcements into that town, albeit briefly. There. Target down. Now, I could, maybe should, have gone for his main base, but I don't. My next objective was going to be Anna, but unfortunately, I run into a Mistral, which hits, but doesn't kill me. So, I'm actually able to keep the K-52 going, because the Mistral did not hit me hard enough. 
He has at this point launched a counteroffensive, and I do not really have a quick response force, so once again, it's a helo. Or in fact, it's two of them. And Potnos from extremely close range. There's a Tiger Hap coming for me. And I hit it once. And that's when I run out of Iglas. And there's the CV moving around in Anna, so we know it's somewhere in the woods. And considering that this flank here on the left was weak, I decide to push my advantage. Or at least try pushing it, because I'm still not sure how much there is over here. Bringing in another 52 and a couple of MI8s with more recon. I was floating a lot of points and the, the move with 52 worked at least once. It might work again. VDV moving forward, spat screw forward. At this point, I was thinking, you know what? I need to get more units out here. Quickly. And I finally realized that moving into a, a forest that I cannot scout with a tank is not a great idea. So I pulled the 72 back, making sure that it survives for a future encounter. It squares off against the leopard a little bit. And I don't actually mind that, because so long as the leopard is engaging my tank, it is not engaging, potentially not even aware of the presence of the VDV. There it is again. Trying to get two of my VPs to shoot it. And that's when I also spot a Crotal with a 52, so that's quickly becoming the new target of the T-72. Unfortunately, the 72 was... Um, oh, no, sorry, it wasn't panic. It was calm, it just missed. Heavy damage to the 2A4, stabilization malfunction. It cannot fire very well on the move. He recaptures Anna, but where the CV went, I don't know. Dropping off the reconnaissance. And also, I just gained two gunships. Well, light gunships, if you will, in the form of those MI8 MTVs. I think that's once again the Leopard. But it seems like he has a very serious lack of reconnaissance here. Because I'm able to start dealing damage against units that I arguably should not even be able to shoot because he would outshoot, well, he would outspot me there. I have no recon, with the exception of the K-52. Again, a Kotal pushes forward, and this... I don't quite get this. He moved his command vehicle. But I'm not sure why. And it's not even temporary that he's moving his command vehicle. It's for a longer period of time. If he were to quickly move it, I would get that. That makes sense. But he doesn't. Now, the area of center is, uh, well, non-existent for me. Yes, I have a CV, but that is about the extent of it. I have nothing else. Five minutes left, and the scores are now very even. I need to make something work. I have exactly one tank in a forest that I do not have any kind of infantry with to support it. But I sense he's kind of weak there too. So the spats guns are moving, the VDV are moving, I got an MI24 that I do not really want to get killed off by a Kotal. Uh, I get a hit on the Leopard. I'm not sure that was a kill. I capture a Mankati, so the area around it's clear. But interestingly, the area behind me is not. I think there are still Rima in that forest, and he could have very easily pushed me out. Skrajet against the Cassiopeis, because that's the only thing that I had. And Tegusko is still moving into position. And there we go. I think it might have been a double kill, actually, by the Tunguska. Getting the VDV forward, as well as the Spatsnaz. I'm sensing that he does not have that much. I'm still learning to trust that. Learning to see when I'm right and when I'm wrong. Because when you're wrong, you can very quickly lose a lot of units. If you're right, you might win the game. And I find the command vehicle. So I tend to lock on with the with the, the Jurgen, but it turns out that the snipers... <laughs> the one sniper rifle from the Spatsnaz... Pew, they get the kill. And now, the sector is neutralized, which is, it is his two-pointer, so I'm able to push on. 
or at least my points are able to start ticking, which with three minutes left on the clock is very, very valuable. And to try and make it a plus four, I'm flying in a command infantry. Again, with less than three minutes left on the clock. At this point, I'm kind of ex expecting him to respond with helos because there is so little time, even though his resupply route is very short. And um, with the helos, let's say as a, a prospect, I'm thinking that the Tunguska needs to be moved uh, forward. He does push back with a couple of Panzer Grenadiers, but they get quickly wiped out by the two helos I have there. And there comes his counteroffensive, which is arguably late. Unfortunately, I have nothing to deal with the groups that are coming in. It's Rima, backed up by a tank. There's a Tiger Hap in the back. There's a Kotal covering everything. So it's not easy for me to take out any one unit and make sure that I wipe out the bunch of them. The, co the command vehicle from my side has landed, wide out in the open. Time to try and wipe out the 52 as well as move the Tunguska in a position to engage the Tiger, but the Tiger has already struck and it has killed my Mi-28. There's another Gazelle coming over, I think he's blind because the Tiger's falling back like it has no recon or it saw my 52 and is not interested in a longer range anti-air fight. Pull the Tunguska back because I know I'm going to lose this side. But I'm hoping that I held it for long enough. And I'm very much hoping he is buying more and more and more units rather than a command unit. Okay, 29 to support. Am I 8 to support? I'm throwing everything that I have forward into this fight. But then again, it's mostly helos without a spotter. So you can guess how well that's going to go. Mortar is not in range, so I, instead I send the Eurogan at it again. And this time the Tiger half gets a little aggressive, maybe trying to hunt down an MI-8, and the Tunguska takes it down. But here are the Rima, and the Rima are going to chew through the Rizvetka very quickly. Moving the Tunguska back further. Again, I know I'm going to lose it. I'm just trying to keep it alive for as long as possible, which is 20 seconds at current. I'm trying to smoke it up, but 20 seconds, it might even take longer for the smoke to arrive there. And a couple of VABs, spot the command, and kill it. Bring in the sector, not under his control, because he still hasn't moved his new command in, but I am still ticking a plus two. And it's enough. And I win the fight. Even though the kill-death ratio is very, very close. Now, some critical points for me to take away from this. <laughs> Again. Um, make sure that I have my infantry shield in position. Infantry first, fire support after that, and then make sure that the target is ideally already a bit softened up with the use of mortars or cluster, whichever you prefer. By doing that, I just make it so much easier. But doing all these mini pushes without fire support is going to get me killed. Also, the early opener with the MI-8s. Mm, probably not the best move on this map. I might need to get a unit in a faster mobile transport, like wheeled, so that I can capitalize on, uh, well, the, the faster road speed that they get. Because my Skrejets, they're great with their guns, but they're a bit slow. Anyway, some lessons learned from me um, might not be the same ones that you have learned. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this new format with me doing the commentary post. Um, I quite like it because it's allowing me to do a reflection on the game and at the same time um, have the game as it was live. So again, let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. For now, that's the end of the video. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon for more.